What's going on everybody? This is Broken Games HDR and in this video I'm going to be reviewing and recapping the Game Awards 2021. So usually when I review these events, these shows that, like, you know, and and the Game Awards, um I go through all the announcements. Um I usually skip a lot of the awards like cuz there's a bunch of irrelevant awards that I don't care about and I know y'all don't care about such as like best esports event and best esports coach i know y'all don't give a damn about that um but usually i still go through every single announcement even the ones that i don't care about and that usually turns out to be like a 40 minute video i don't want to do that this time and i don't want to do that anymore so i'm really just going to be naming and talking about the announcements to me that were important and or that i cared about and that i was interested in right if there's anything that I skipped over that, you know, you really cared about, that's a big deal to you, let me know in the comment section. So, so you know, let me know not to disrespect your game, not to sleep on your game. But I'm going to talk about what I cared about so we don't end up with a 40-minute video. Hopefully, at max, it ends up being around maybe around 15 minutes. <clears throat> so, overall, before we get into the winners, I'm going to get into the winners first and then the announce and then the, you know, the announcements, the world premieres, you know. Um... The show was, it felt very long uh, this year, including the pre-show, the show was three and a half hours, right? It's been like that for a while now with the Game Awards, but I got to say this year really felt like it was three and a half hours. Past shows to me uh, were better as far as like the content that was showed, I think. So past shows didn't really feel as long as they were. There was plenty of cringe. There was plenty of advertisements. There was plenty of filler, you know. All, all the quintessential things that make a Game award show from Jeff Keighley, oh, it was there. It was absolutely there. Um, so we're going to get right into it. Uh, let's not waste time. And I'm going to start with the winners first. And I, I got uh, I got IGN open, so we're going to just go with uh, IGN's page for uh, you know the list of winners in each category. And then we're, I got uh, Games Radar open. We're going to go there for the announcements. <clears throat> So, most anticipated game is Elden Ring, which also won last year. That just shows you how the gaming industry works. Uh, we're going to skip all, all over this irrelevant stuff. Best esports, best athlete, content creator. Never heard of none of these people. Um, <clears throat> best multiplayer game. So, best multiplayer game went to It Takes Two. Now, me personally, right, I separate co-op games from multiplayer games. When I think of multiplayer games, typically me personally, I think of PvP. Typically. There's some exceptions I make when I think of multiplayer games. Like, like, cause I I I consider Back for Blood a multiplayer game, technically, right? But it takes two. I put that in the very fine and small box of co-op. And I understand why it's in this category, because you know, there's not like enough co-op games that come out every year. Uh to, you know, to put it in its own category, and I get it, and I get it that technically when you say multiplayer, it means multiple players, right, so any game that, that you can play with multiple players is technically a multiplayer game, I got that, I'm just explaining to you how, you know, how I usually think of multiplayer versus co-op, but it takes two, you know, from, I didn't play it, um, I, I bought it day one, and I plan to play it with my wife. We've been putting it off for, for the longest, but I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. So, you know, it's nothing, it's sold well, you know, it's, it's got a whole bunch of praise, nothing but great things. You know, the game the, the game and level design is great. So, obviously, um, Joseph Farris is funny dude. He went from, um, you know, F the Oscars to winning best multiplayer game. I think he won like three or four uh awards this this night and um we're gonna get to those so best sim strategy game went to age of the empires 4 uh that's deserved i would say i played a little bit of age 4 but it's on the back burner best sports racing game forza horizon 5 no surprise there with all the praise that game that that game has gotten uh best family game shout out to it takes two once again for beating nintendo in their own category for the longest time, the best family game is pretty much the Nintendo category, right? As we know. And Nintendo has four nominees here. And it takes two beat them. Imagine. Imagine losing a category when you have a four out of five chance. Shout out to It Takes Two for that. Uh, best fighting game, Guilty Gear Strive. Best RPG, Tales of Arise. We've heard, you know, everybody, you know, lose their mind over how 
uh, Great Tales of Arises, Cyberpunk 2077 shouldn't even be here. A lot of people, um, we're, and there's been a lot of salt from Nintendo fans for uh, the Game of the Year winner and also Best RPG. Um, a lot of them feel like Monster Hunter Rise should have won this this our Best RPG. Uh, best Action Adventure Game, Metroid Dread. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. In my opinion, I mean, I don't play Metroid Dread. I don't play Metroid games. Um, my overall game of the year, I've been saying it consistently since it came out, is Resident Evil Village. Um, that's, to me, the best game that came out uh, this year. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't have been mad at I would have been okay with Resident Evil Village or Guardians of the Galaxy winning that uh, category honestly uh, best action game went to Returnal Returnal is if not anything else an action game like that's what you call a pure action game right <laughs> if that game doesn't do <laughs> Jesus Christ if that game doesn't do anything else it's gonna action <laughs> like it's a gamer's game like old school what we consider to be a game Returnal is the epitome of that even though I've been tell, telling people from the beginning, it's not game of the year caliber, it's not game of the year worthy, and it wasn't in game of the year. It's definitely probably, you know, as far as the be best action, that's what the game is, nonstop for the entire game. Best innovation and accessibility, Forza Horizon 5. Uh, best VR, AR game, Resident Evil 4. I hope that comes to PSVR 2, because right now it's exclusive to Quest or whatever it is. Um... Best Community Support, Final Fantasy XIV Online. Uh, best Mobile Game, we don't, need, we, don't even, we don't acknowledge mobile games here. We are extremely hateful of, of mobile games. Uh, best Debut Indie Game went to Kenner Bridge of Spirits. And Best Indie Game overall went to Kenner Bridge of Spirits. Which I would have been okay, in Best Indie Game, I would have been okay with uh, either Death's Door or Kenner Bridge of Spirits. I think uh, Death's... Best debut absolutely should go to Kenner Bridge of Spirits. Best indie game, like I said, you know it. It was definitely between these two. Uh, I haven't played these two. Twelve minutes maybe had a chance, but I got to think like because indie, the term indie has been you know twisted and conflated so much. Like I wonder if like true pure indie developers who don't have a publisher who are in this category, how they might feel. When a game like Kenner Bridge of Spirits, which is indie because it's it's made by an independent developer, but it has two publishers technically, or it last it has two supporters, which help them make the help them make the game, which is PlayStation and Epic. Like some of them, I'm sure, didn't have nothing like that. So just pointing that out there. Uh, but I think it, it, you know Kenner deserves that best ongoing game. I could have sworn I just did that. Didn't I just do that? Oh, that was best community support. Uh, best ongoing game, uh, Final Fantasy XIV Online. Best games for impact, Life is Strange Through Colors. Best performance, Maggie Robertson, Resident Evil Village, who was Lady Demetresque, which is not surprising uh, because everybody was lusting and losing their mind over her. Don't get me wrong. I think she deserves it because, you know, my game of the year is Resident Evil Village. Um... But, you know, I thought, like, the dude from Deathloop, even though I thought Deathloop was uh, pretty much trash, uh, I thought Deathloop, you know, I didn't like Deathloop, I didn't like Far Cry, I don't play Life is Strange. Um, I honestly thought they would have gave it to the guy or the woman um, in uh, uh, the main two in, in Deathloop. Best audio design, uh, Forza Horizon 5. I thought it, 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 it should have went to Resident Evil Village, but I'm not mad or anything. I'm not mad at any of these. Uh, awards uh you know whoever won some people are like actually salty um at at some of these winners and i'm like bro it's not that serious um best score near replicant i would have gave it to guardians of the galaxy um I, i'm not a near fan uh i mean guardians of the galaxy had a cheat code like it it literally just has a whole bunch of licensed music in it because you know uh music is part of the dna of guardians of the galaxy uh, best art direction. This was the only one, only the only winner that had me personally scratching my head, and I was like, no. Uh, best art direction went to Death Loop, and I'm like, all right, I guess that's the. Like I said, I don't care either way, but this is the one. I, this is the one winner I disagreed with vehemently. Like, no. Um, I would. I would as as ugly as I think Psychonauts two looked. I would have understood why Psychonauts 2 would win this or Kenna Bridge or definitely Kenna Bridge of Spirits. But it is what it is what it is. 
Um, best narrative, Guardians of the Galaxy absolutely deserves this. Like I said, like I said, when when and I've been I have been like just praising Guardians of the Galaxy since since I played it. It is absolutely shocking how good the dialogue, the narrative, the story, and the writing is in this game. Nobody expected it. It's it's crazy how good it is. Uh, best game direction, Death uh, Death Loop. Now a lot of a lot of games that win best game direction also win game of the year. So. It was very, after this announcement, it was very possible and very likely that it was going to go to uh, Deathloop. But Game of the Year ended up going to It Takes Two, which, once again, I didn't play. I've only heard nothing but great things. I'm going to get to it eventually. I'm probably going to live stream it uh, with, with my wife. Um, <clears throat> once again, my personal Game of the Year is Res Resident Evil Village. And yes, because it's pretty much Resident Evil 4 in first person. Y'all know how much I love Resident Evil 4. Um, the only fans that I've really seen salty so far, which is funny, which is is Nintendo fans because everybody thought like, oh, either PlayStation fans or Xbox fans are are gonna um are gonna end up being uh, salty uh, from whoever wins, and no, it just it ended up being like Nintendo fans from what I've seen because they felt like Metroid Dread uh, should should have won this category, and this was overall a weak year. I'm not saying that these games. There, there's been plenty of good games this year, great games, but there were no runaway like game of the year nominations. There was like usually um, each year there's like two, maybe three, um, you know, that are pretty much guaranteed to win. Usually two, right? But this year it's like right anybody could win. Last couple years, it's like listen, these two is is it's out of these two. The rest of y'all are just happy to be there, right? This year, bro, it was completely up in the air. We had no idea who was exactly gonna win, and um, people felt like you know it was it you know a lot of Nintendo fans feel like it should have been Metroid Dread, and 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 there's been a lot of like weird like disrespect for it takes two because a lot of people who are like live in a box think that It Takes Two was some irrelevant no-name game. Like, the game sold three like three million uh, copies or something, or something like that. I can't remember if that was, that was in the first month. It was it was very quickly upon release. It sold, like, three million. Um, it's, I've heard nothing but great things about it, especially, the you know, the level design, the, the art. Um, the worst thing I heard about it was, like, you know, the paper-thin story, you know, because it's, it's a, really a game about co-op and gameplay. Um, but a lot of Nintendo fans and a lot of people in general, like... Acting like it's just some shovelware game that nobody knows and nobody played, and like, bruh, like plenty of people played this game, plenty of people bought it. It sold well, and it, it was critically acclaimed. So, um, like, it's like out of out of everything here, it's probably like the I guess least popular. As in, if you mention the name to, if you mention any of the game, the names of these games in general to people. Everybody, well, De Death Loop, honestly, because it's it's a it's a. I think Death Loop and It Takes Two popularity might be in the same ballpark, but Metroid, because of its name, people know. Uh, Psychonauts Two, uh, yeah, Psychonauts Two is probably more relevant than Death Loop or It Takes Two. But Ratchet and Clank is popular. Resident Evil Village, you know, that's popular because of their namesake and everything like that. Um, but yeah, It Takes Two isn't like you, you get y'all get what I'm saying. Like people just being salty and like. People need to, like, I've seen people throw up, oh, it's, throw around, oh, it's rigged, oh, it's a setup, oh, it's, like, shut up, bro. Like, just because something you want to win doesn't win doesn't mean it's rigged, doesn't mean it's a setup. It's, it's, the, all this stuff is opinion. It's just opinion, bro, that, that, that's it. Like, it's not rigged. Like, come on, bro, you, you, like, shut, shut up. If you really out here thinking that, shut up. Get over it. You, you you'll be okay. You're a little butthurt right now, but... Trust me, you'll get over it in, in due time. Um, all this stuff is just is just uh, opinion based. No need to like you know, get the pitchforks and you know and, and the knives and and the and the torches and everything. Y'all ready to burn stuff down? Like it's 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 not that serious. Um, all this stuff is just uh, opinion based. Um, so let's get to uh, let's get to the announcements. <clears throat> Once again, I'm going to be skipping over announcements that I don't I don't personally care about, which is 80% of these things. Yep, don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. The only thing I got to say about Babylon Falls is like 
what we saw last night looked worse than what we saw at the first reveal, which is strange. I'm not interested in the game either way. I'm just saying. Evil West looked fire. Uh, this game looked very impressive. For some reason, this trailer, I believe, doesn't have the actual gameplay. And I know I didn't, I'm not losing my mind um, because they actually showed us gameplay last night. But this trailer doesn't actually seem to have gameplay for some reason. I know they showed gameplay. So that game actually looked good. This was during the pre-show, by the way. Usually there's a whole bunch of relevant stuff during the pre-show. And then there was also Have a Nice Death, which looked fire. This game looks very much like Ori, Death's Door, uh, Zelda, Hollow Knight, combination of all of those things. It's a roguelike. Oh, it looks, the gameplay and the animation looks absolutely phenomenal. This is a day one for me. I can tell this is going to be a day one. This joint looks heat. Okay, heat, flames, fuego. All of that. Uh, so I look forward to that. <clears throat> uh, Hellblade um, 2. It feels like this game has been in development for a long time. I'm not going to knock them. Take your time. Cool. It just feels like it's been like very long. Um, we got... they Because it first premiered at the Game Awards last year, I think. And we actually got gameplay. And anybody who plays the played the first Hellblade game knows that this was gameplay because of like the animation. The only thing is this gameplay... It was very scripted and very on rails. So I'm not even knocking somebody for thinking it was not gameplay because it's very scripted. It's not like ha like half of it was half. Of, it was just very on rails. Like half of it was even if you were playing the game, you wouldn't really be doing much. Right. It was it was one of those things. It wasn't like pure gameplay, like combat. Or like, you know, actual exploration or anything like that. Which is what we really want to see from Hellblade 2. We want to see how the combat is improved from the first game. So, you know, this gameplay didn't really show us much. Uh, Star Wars Eclipse. So this is made by Quantic Dream. It's going to be a Quantic Dream Star Wars game. When this trailer was, sh was first showed, a lot of people were hyped. Like, oh, yeah, another Star Wars game. Then they saw Quantic Dream and they got, up they got upset. Because, you know, Quantic Dream makes story, uh, you know, decision base games like Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, uh, Detroit Become Human, and I'm a fan of all those games, so I'm down for it, and I'm a fan of Star Wars, right? I understand some people wanting, like, probably some other genre of Star Wars games, not, like, you know, something that uh, Quantic Dream would make, but I'm here for it. I look forward to it. Um, Wonder Woman. Um, So, first, let me just say, if you can make a Wonder Woman game, you can make a Superman game. Because the whole Justice League is completely overpowered. The whole Justice League is completely gods. One of the reasons, and I'm not saying like I, I want a Superman game, but one of the things, one of the challenges that people say is like, oh, if you make a Superman game, realistically, who can be his enemies? Like, there's only a handful of uh, people you can actually, you know, put Superman up against, and it will actually be a, ch a quote-unquote challenge. Um, and who are going to be the regular enemies, you know, that you you know, the regular enemies that you fight throughout, you know, the game, you know, we know who the bosses can be, but who are the regular enemies? And if you can make a Wonder Woman game, and this is made by Monolith, I believe, uh, you can make a Superman game because they're all OP. They're extremely OP. Like, like if you take, Wonder Woman could take 90% or maybe higher than that, all of the enemies that Superman could take. Like, she's, like, I'm not saying that super if, if Superman and Wonder Woman fought, that Wonder Woman would win. She, but she, she could definitely beat uh, all of Superman's enemies, if not, probably not as easy, but she could definitely beat them. They're all OP. The whole Justice League, they, 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 they write these, you know, characters to be as powerful as they need to be. <laughs> so they're all OP. If you can make a Wonder Woman game, you can make a Superman game. Um. So, yeah, this is coming from uh, the developers of Middle-Earth Shadow of Mordor. And listen, superhero games, comic book games, they're, they're just starting. If you think you've seen a lot lately, recently, there's more on the way. Publishers are going to be, like, fighting to get, the, to get the rights, the license, and the IPs for some of these untapped uh, uh, superheroes. And there's plenty of them because for a long time, it's mainly been, like, what, well, uh, Spider-Man and Batman that have really been used. There's so much more they can use, so you're going to see a lot more of it. Alan Wake 2. This is probably the most shocking announcement of the night, and I'm pleased by it. So Alan Wake 2 is one of those cult classic games that, like, it has its 
specific fans, but it was never like a, a wildly popular hit. And being that like 10 years have passed since that time, I'm like, there's no way it's going to get a sequel. Like, I'm, I would have bet any amount of money. There's no way you ever get a sequel for this game. Like I said, because it was never like super popular and two, so much time has passed. Um, and the even though they released a, a remaster of the original game, I thought that was just for shits and giggles. Like if that was any other game that released a master a remaster like that, I would have been like, yeah, a sequel's coming. They were just testing the waters. But with Alan Wake, because so much time passed and it wasn't like this super popular game, I'm like, that's that's just for shits and giggles. Maybe a little bit of profit, right? But I'm happy to you know I'm happy about this announcement. He looked like John Wick at first. Um, and, you know, it wasn't gameplay or anything. It was just a, a, an announcement. And um, uh, dude said, um, it, it's uh, Sam Lake said it's going to be a true survival horror game, right? And I'm excited to see what they do with the game mechanically. Because Alan Wake, you know, conceptually, it was just shine your light on the shadows, shoot the shadows. I'm And I'm glad they actually... because. In the PlayStation, there's also a PlayStation uh, write-up, uh, you know, that Sam Lake released some information about the game. Apparently, he's been working on this game in some ways, uh, in, in some small ways, since the original game. So, he's been working on it, at least the writing of it, since the original game. And a small team, small team of developers have been working on it since the original game. So, this is something that's been in development for a a long time, at least the idea of it and, and the and, and the pre-production and the conception of it and the concept of it for a while. And I'm glad it didn't actually get released like, you know, two or three years after the original. It's like more 10 years after the original um, because we're going to get a much better game visually, uh, gameplay wise and all that because I want to see what they do <clears throat> as far as like horror survival aspects more than flash, you know, shining a light and shooting the enemies because it was more of an action game as he admitted himself Alan the first Alan Wake was more of an action game so I'm excited for that which is like 2023 uh Sonic 2 Sonic the Hedgehog 2 movie I never saw the first Sonic movie but you know I heard it was pretty good uh Idris Elba is is gonna is, is playing Knuckles in this Tails is gonna be in this uh also so yeah um Horizon Forbidden West uh the yeah, the Horizon Forbidden West trailer I mean, it looks great. We saw like a little gift they released like a week or so ago. That looked amazing. The game abs looks absolutely amazing. Can't wait for it. They they've they've improved like melee and the melee combat so drastically because that was one of the biggest criticisms of the of the original game. So they're definitely focused on that, as you can see. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate is coming to PC. This is like one, like probably my my game of my game of the generation runner up right behind God of War for last generation. I beat Final Fantasy VII Remake and the DLC four times. That's how much I love the game. You know I'm not somebody who like typically rebeats a, a, a games a bunch of times, but that one I love. Um, So yeah, that's coming to PC. I'm probably going to buy it on PC and beat it another time. I'm being real with you. Okay, yeah, I'm skipping all. Yeah, okay. Cuphead, the delicious last course. You know what just occurred to me when I was reading this? Cuphead, the delicious last course, is Cuphead DLC. Now, don't I, I need y'all to not act like y'all knew that because that just hit me that the delicious last course stood for DLC. I'm like, wow, that's that that's the initials. Those are the that's fire. Um, <clears throat> but this is the it's coming out June 30th. This is DLC. That we heard about years ago, and we assumed like it was canceled or it fell off the face of the earth. We don't know what happened to it, but it's finally coming next year. I'm happy about that. I love the original, um, you know, uh, Cuphead game, and uh, game journalists are shaking in their boots. Um, Sonic Frontiers. You already know how I feel about Sonic. Sonic is trash. Sonic has always been trash. Sonic, there's never been a good Sonic game. Sonic fans are abuse victims because they keep going back to this and they keep getting slapped in the face. I'm going to move on. Yeah, okay. Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. <clears throat> we got to see actual gameplay, like from the player's perspective, um, not just cinematic and, you know, a presentation type gameplay. 
but actual gameplay of what it's going to look for the for the player. And it looks good. I'm going to say it looks good. I'm not blown away or anything like that yet. Got to see more. But it looks good. This game has been, has been uh, very, you know, it's been coming for a long time. We've been waiting for it. It took forever to get the announcement. And it took forever to get, you know, some actual gameplay. And they featured the Flash in this uh, trailer. They got and it's Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. So uh, you can assume you're going to be targeting different Justice League members in this. We've only seen the Flash so far. And we know Superman is going to be in it also. But obviously you got to suspend belief because as I said, with the Wonder Woman um, game, all the Justice League main members especially are extremely OP, right? So if Flash really wanted to kill the Suicide Squad, he would be able to do it in an instant, literally in a split second. He could travel back in time and kill them before they even realized they were dead. He wouldn't even, even have to use time travel. He could literally just kill all of them, take their brain matter out of their skulls, and draw a Picasso painting with it before they even realized they were dead. He would, he would be able to like take the brain matter out of their, their, their like, their skull so fast and like draw a painting with it before it registered to them that they were dead and he would be able to show them the painting with their brain matter. But y'all get the point. You got to suspend belief for certain things. Um, for Spoken. For Spoken, every time they show this game, it just looks okay to me. Like I'm not, I'm not convinced with, by the story. Um, the visuals don't look great. Like the character models look eh. The, the world that, the, the world design and the world the world textures just visually and, and presentation wise I'm not blown away by this game like I'm not crazy about the story yet and um yeah it just looks the biggest I think the biggest thing about this game looks to be like the traversal and like the flashy somewhat the, the somewhat flashy combat yeah I really don't have that much to say about it I mean it comes out May May 24th I'm not sold on it I'm not like blown away by it or anything uh, I mean, Saints Row comes out August, you know, we already knew that, I don't really care, uh, uh, Tiny Tina, um, I kind of look forward to that, still not sure about it, uh, yeah, don't care, don't care, they had a whole bunch of, uh, mobile stuff, um, there was Rumbleverse, which was a, a brawler wrestling, uh, Battle Royale game, more Battle Royale stuff. There was a Plague's Tale Requiem. I'm I'm not really into a Plague's Tale. Dying Light 2, very I look forward to that, but that was just a cinematic trailer. Um there's the Halo T uh TV series coming out next year on Paramount Plus. I have Paramount Plus, so I'm gonna check that out. Um El there was an Elden Ring story trailer. It was just a story trailer, you know, whatever. Um and then there was the the Matrix Awakens, the Unreal Engine 5 experience that you can actually play on PS5 and Xbox. Series X right now. So yeah, y'all can go uh check that out. People seem to be impressed by it by what I saw on, what I saw on the timeline. But yeah, that was pretty much it from the announcements. All I really care to talk about, right? I'm not gonna go through everything like I said because that's a super long video. Um and I don't care about them. So yeah, I just as like I said in the beginning, I felt like the show was uh it dragged. There was a lot of content that I personally didn't care about. Um, I think previous shows have, have been better. Um, I'm okay with the winners. I mean, I'm okay with the winners of the show, you know, each year. It's not a big deal to me necessarily who wins. This is all like entertainment and something to talk about for me. So I'm, I'm going to watch every year. You know, I'm not one of those people who take it super serious or anything like that. Um, of course I'm going to have my opinions on who should, who should win, but I'm not going to be like butthurt about it. There could have been way more salt. Uh, depending on who won game of the year uh, from PlayStation fans or, you know, Xbox fans. But since it went to It Takes Two, it, it's funny enough, like I said, it came from Nintendo fans. So um, we'll see. We'll see, uh, you know, how things go, though. Because um, you never know what the timeline is going to spark up and what the Twitter space is going to spark up. So, yeah, th that's my review on the show. It was, it was cringe. There was a lot of fluff, filler, um, ad, you know, annoying ads. And, you know, um, it... Like some developers didn't really show up. Uh, I was looking at the audience. There seemed to be some uh, a good amount of empty seats, I, I think. Um, and, you know, it's COVID. It's still COVID. You know, some people don't want to be there, uh, you know, among a lot of people. I understand. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, this show to me with the world premieres and what was shown wasn't the best. 
uh, in versus previous years. And yeah. So that's my thoughts. Let me know what y'all think. Um, hit the like button, hit the notification bell so you can, you know, be part of the notification gang and uh, be notified anytime I upload anything or if I live stream. I'm going to be continuing my Halo uh, live stream. Um, Weapon Will, the last episode of Weapon Will podcast is going to be this Sunday. Uh, so we're going to be talking about the Game Awards and Halo and everything that's happened in the past week and the week before since we haven't done shows. And yeah, that's about it, y'all. I will catch y'all on the next video. I'm out of here. Peace.